is Friday, December 11th, and I am back for my stitching update. It has been two weeks since my last one, so I hope you have all been well, and you've been stitching and making and creating all of the things. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. This is a video podcast about cross-stitching and sometimes quilting. However, if you are not interested in seeing or hearing about the quilts, I show those in the second half of my video, and I let you know in plenty of time that they will be making an appearance so that that way you can go on to the next floss tube video. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I hope you have had a great two weeks since we have last been together and you've gotten lots and lots of stitching done. So as you can probably tell, I have now decorated the house for Christmas. I believe the last time we were together, I still had Thanksgiving up and then the weekend after Thanksgiving, I take it all down and I put up Christmas decorations. So I'm pretty much 100% decorated for Christmas. There's just a few little things that I need to do, a couple of little things that I need to add, and, and I've been meaning to do that, and I'm hoping that this weekend I'll get a chance to, you know, fix those areas that, that I need to. Um, the theme is Christmas trees. Um, my husband likes Santas, and I love Christmas trees. And I have, there's three in this room, and then there's the one in the other room. We have the main family tree, which is across the way. It is new to us this year. We had to replace our old one. It had uh, it had started falling apart and we were just sort of, you know, every year we would just kind of do what we needed to do to, you know, keep the branches in the sockets or, and then it just got to a point where we couldn't use it anymore. And so we have a new Christmas tree this year. Um, this tree here is the seasonal tree and it is now decorated with Santa's. And then the pencil tree that you see that is over here, it just has uh, white and red Christmas balls. And then it's got some, I don't know if you can see them from here, there's little uh, clear snowflakes. And those were from my grandma. Um, when my grandpa and her first got married, they didn't have a whole lot of money. And so they got a small Christmas tree and then they went down to the department store and they bought a, a set of uh, clear, Chris, uh, clear snowflakes. So it was clear and then there was also pink and teal and green. And those, the other three colors are on the vintage tree that's out in the other room. And I put the clear ornaments on this one. And my grandma came over here yesterday and the first thing she noticed were the snowflakes. And then of course she went in the other room and she saw the vintage tree, which has all of her old vintage ornaments on it, as well as the angel, which also decorated their very first tree. And it decorated their tree all the way up until my grandfather passed away. And then my grandma handed it down to me. It is probably my favorite tree. And I, I'm hoping that I did a video and I'm hoping that the video was before my introduction and then that the vintage tree is the first one that you'll see and you'll know it because it's it's teals and pinks and you'll see the old ornaments and it's my favorite so that being said i'm probably not going to do a home tour this year i know i did it last year but i'm just gonna like insert pictures and just short little clips here and there if you've been following me on instagram you've probably already seen it but the house is decorated, I love it, um, especially now that the weather is changing and, and like today it's pouring down rain and it's very gray and gloomy and just having the trees on and just everything lit and sparkly, it's just, it's really nice. So that being said, I know you didn't stop by to hear me talk about my Christmas decorations. Uh, in my last video, I did have a couple of questions. One of the questions, I did forget to write it down. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with my comments. I can see what everybody says. And if I go in and I answer somebody and then they respond back to me, I am not able to see it for whatever reason. So if you if you asked me a question and I, and I answered it and then you responded back and I haven't responded to you, I'm really sorry. Um, please feel free to send an email, um, pumpkinhollowquilting at gmail.com. Um, I don't really understand. I don't. I know it's kind of been a, a little bit of an issue uh, the last handful of videos I've had, you know, where I could see the comments, but I couldn't respond to them or 
where I could see that I had comments, but I couldn't even see what they were. If you, if you have, you know, please um, send me an email because I'm not ignoring you. It's just, I can't, I can't even tell that you have responded back to my original comment. So I don't want you to think that I'm ignoring you. And I know a couple of people, I, I went in and I, I had to answer them specifically. And um, I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you. So just please send me an email. Um, and there was one other, so there was a comment that somebody asked me and I forgot to write it down. And I remembered it all the way up until I was doing my video. Oh, it was about my banjo. So last year for my birthday, I got a banjo. And I, I love banjo music. And um, so I had got, I had, you know, joked with my, I've joked with him for years about, you know, a banjo and getting a banjo. And one of these days I'm gonna learn to play a banjo. And so he got me a banjo for my birthday last year. And I was taking lessons I started my first lessons in December and I went December, January, February, and then March, everything started shutting down. They canceled the lessons and I haven't had lessons since. So I kind of kept up with it, just, you know, redoing the same songs over or the, not necessarily a song, but like sections of songs. And then of course, as time went on and the, le you know, the lessons continue to be postponed or canceled. I have to admit that I kind of set the banjo aside for the time being. Um, I am planning on picking it back up. I found a YouTube creator who does banjo lessons and it's free. So I am going, after Christmas is over, I'm gonna go and start at the very beginning and I'm going to work my way through and just teach myself how to play the banjo I have no idea how much longer the lessons will be postponed or canceled and and so at least this way if life does return to normal uh, at least I can go to my lessons and it won't look like I wasted those three months um, at the beginning of the year so hopefully maybe at this time next year I can play a, a little jig um, but right now I only know like bits and pieces. It was only to get you familiar with the, the chords and things like that. So I'll just try to teach myself for the time being. Uh, I have missed playing it. Like I said, I love listening to it. So I want to be able to, I want to be able to play it. I think that would, I think that would just be a lot of fun. So maybe a year from now, I'll revisit your question and maybe I'll know how to play a song by then. <laughs> okay. So because I did not write it down, I cannot remember who it was that asked me that question, but I'm sorry. I'll try to go in and look and see if I can scroll your name, if I can find it. I, like I said, I've been having issues viewing my comments and, and all of that. So um, Renee Smith, she wanted to know how many threads that I left in between each of my anniversaries of the heart charts. So in the directions, it'll tell you to leave three spaces or three stitches in between each block. And that is what I did. So you would just from the, you know, when you stop, you know, you go where your last stitch is, you count three over. And then on that fourth stitch, that's where, that's where I took my first stitch for the next block. So that there's three spaces in between all of them. Um, Amy Cisco wanted to know how I stay motivated with my stitching because she keeps losing her stitchy bug. So I think that what really helps me stay motivated is that I do have a rotation. And so what I know I've talked about it um, in a bunch of different videos, but if you're new here, what I do is, is on the weekend, so Saturday and Sunday, I have that as sort of two days where I work on a whip that has just sort of been hanging out in my whip basket, waiting for me to get back to it. So I just pick one and I work on that one all the way until it's done, every weekend until it's done. During the weekdays, so Monday and Friday, I will rotate between one to three projects. It just kind of depends. Um, in this instance, I've had anniversaries of the heart, so I will work on that Monday, Tuesday, possibly Wednesday and Thursday. And then on Wednesday, I work on Olga stocking. So that's kind of typically how my rotation has been. 
Uh, occasionally, um, I have rotated in Feast of Friendship if I have finished my um, anniversaries block. Um, I have also rotated, you know, if I'm really close to finishing my morning stitch, I will do that in the evening. So I do change my rotation um, from time to time, but mostly, um, especially since uh, the beginning of June, I've been working on Brian's stocking on the weekend. I've been working on anniversaries of the heart during the week. Olga stocking I started back in September. Um, and it just kind of depends. I, I, I think that rotation is what really helps keep me motivated. And then Kimber McKinney wanted to know what my favorite quilting pattern I go to most office often when I'm quilting, or do I prefer a variety of patterns? And do I hand applique or use a sewing machine to do applique? So uh, I do not have a favorite quilting pattern. I usually just, uh, in terms of like a quilting pattern, it just has to be something that catches my interest and my eye. But usually once I make the quilt one time, I don't usually make it again. I might make a variation of it, but usually it's just kind of one and then it's done. And then as far as the, um, the hand applique or sewing it down with, with my sewing machine, I don't really have a preference. I do both. I, I have done hand applique. In fact, I, I have a Lori Holt project uh, called Autumn Love that I started. Gosh, when did I start that? Was it, has it been two years ago now? Three years ago now? Um, but that one is all hand applique but I also do machine applique and sew it down with my sewing machine. So it just kind of depends on my mood. Most often I probably uh, choose to go with the machine applique just because it's a little bit faster. I usually do a wonky stitch and uh, go around it that way. That way I don't have to worry about my lines being perfectly straight. Um, and then Lynn Sykes wanted to know what I do with my charts when I'm done. Uh, so I do, a couple of different things. Uh, sometimes I pass them on to my friends, sometimes I give them away in my video, and sometimes I hold on to them because uh, I feel like I can use the motifs again in something else. You know, if, if say I'm stitching on something and I don't really like that particular motif, but I need something to fill that spot in, I might go consult one of the charts that I've held on to because I like specific motifs that are in it. All right, those are all of the questions that I had. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause really quickly because I hear Freddie, he is into something. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Um, what happened? So today's been very eventful so far. My husband went, well, first we got this mysterious package that arrived and, and uh, we couldn't figure out where it had come from. And then uh, my husband decided to go grocery shopping because normally he does the grocery shopping on Friday. And then pre-COVID and pre when everybody was home, that's when I would film my floss tube videos. Well, now that everybody's home, I don't usually get to film my videos until much later in the afternoon. So what happened was mysterious package came. We couldn't figure out where it had come from. Um, somebody, I don't know if it was one of our neighbors or, or where it had come from, but it had got delivered to the wrong address. And luckily they, you know, had brought and dropped it off and, and gave it to us. So we tried to figure out where it had come from. We couldn't. He leaves to go to the grocery store. And then um, my sister-in-law calls and, and, and tells me that the package was from her. <laughs> So anyway, right after I got off the phone with her, the phone rings again, and it's Brian, and he said that um, he went out to put the groceries in the car, and the tire was flat. And this tire, it's the same one, so it's the it's the rear passenger side tire, it is brand new, brand spanking new, like as of Monday or Tuesday, it was brand new. And it's a replacement tire too, because we had got brand new tires put on in the summer, and then a couple, I guess it was a month ago, uh, we must have ran over a nail or something like that and the tire was flat. So Brian took it up to the tire store. They fixed it. But unfortunately, when they fixed it, they went 
and they did something to it and this so that the patch didn't hold so the tire ended up getting, being flat again and then they had to replace the tire and then finally it, it was just a whole thing it was a whole, whole thing anyway so this brand new tire that he just had got put on like i think it was monday flat as a pancake so i had to call the tire company they went out gave him air and meanwhile <laughs> We had to unload Allison's car. So all of her stuff that she brought home from the dorm is in the other room. And we had to go rescue the groceries <laughs> so he could go to the tire store to get the tire fixed. And so Freddie was in Allison's, um, all of her bags and stuff. So he was, he was in it and I could hear him out there and I don't know what it is he can get into. So I had to go get him. Anyway, it's just been a very, very strange day. <laughs> So, and I promise I will show Freddie because in my last video, I forgot to, and I, and I promise that I will go and grab him uh, before, I, before I go. And I also remembered there was another question that I had got in my video that I had forgot to write down. And that is, um, so in my last video, right here where this Christmas tree is, I had a, what I call a trench. And I had a, uh, well, I had one person ask me what the trench was, and, but I've had the qu same question asked a couple of times and, and I just forgot to say, um, I need to get better about that, being a little bit more organized before I do my videos and, you know, going through and writing the questions down as they come in instead of, you know, waiting and then forgetting. And I don't want you guys to ever think I'm ignoring you because I am totally not. It's just, it's one of those things and I'm, I'm going to try to get better about that. But this is the trench. So this, um, the reason why I call it, it's it's a piece of wood that is shit. You know, it's it's oval, and it's carved out in the middle. I got it from Hobby Lobby, and the reason why I call it a trench is just because it's long and it's a, you know, people call those bigger plates trenches. So I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was gray, and I bought it. I think I bought it in the spring. Um, what do they call it? This I don't know if it's spring decor or spring something. And I bought it. It was like eleven ninety nine. I used a forty percent off coupon, and I brought it home. And it didn't really go with any of my decor, so I ended up um, I I put uh, antiquing wax on it, and this is what it looks like. So it's got my two little smalls in here. This one was a Christmas wishes by um, Tina Waltman. And then this one was gifted to me. Isn't that so awesome? Love it. Love it. Love it. So this is my trench. And usually it sits right here. Uh, but now I moved it across the room so that my uh, Thomas Kincaid tree can sit there. So in January, It'll go back, but I don't know what, what exactly is gonna be in it. I don't really have any any smalls yet. I don't know, it might not be back there in January. It might not be till spring. I'm not really sure. Stitching smalls is something that, you know, I've been kidding them, but I never seem to manage to work them into my rotation. And I know that my plans next year do include doing quite a few little smalls and also, for some reason, all of the stuff that I've been kidding up for next year is all seasonal. And I, I don't know how that happened, but it's what I need. I don't really have a whole lot of, of seasonal, like cross-stitching smalls and, and things like that. But uh, I will talk about that in my next video, which by the way, my next video, which will come out, I believe the 26th of December, that is the one where I'm gonna talk about what is in my mocking basket of whips, my heckling drawer of kits, uh, my new year new start, and what my plans for next year will be. So that will be my next video. And then a week after that, so I think that's January 2nd, I'll be back with a regular update. So you'll get to see me um, a little bit more than what you normally do. So this past week, uh, Brenda Gervais of With I Needle and Thread, she released a stitch along. Um, it's a free stitch along. How I'm finding the charts, and I believe it's the only place where you can find the charts, is on her Facebook page. And I will, I'll put a link to her Facebook page down below. But she announced that she was doing a stitch along. 
and it's called the Mary and Minty, S-A-L, I think, but it's just the charts called Mary and Minty. I don't have a picture of what it looks like, but this is the instructions page for, you know, the, the threads you need and the linen and all of that. Um, it did start on Monday, so the first chart released on Monday, and then the second chart released on Wednesday, and then the third one released today, and then I think tomorrow the fourth one releases. Uh, and I don't I don't think it's anything that, you know, once it releases on, you know, Saturday, it's gone forever. I think that it's something that it's always going to be there on her page, I think. Um, but if you are at all interested in it, um, it is on her Facebook page and it's free. And um, as of tomorrow, you'll be able to, you know, get all four of the parts. So this is the progress that I have so far. Um, you'll have to, you know, please pardon that I left it in the, um, the hoop. So this is my morning stitch. I get about a half hour to 45 minutes a day working on this. I am a little bit behind. So the very first chart when it released, it was um, this border here, Rudolph, and then there's another border that's at the top. And then on Wednesday, it was the tree, uh, there's poinsettias down here, and then another border. And then today there's a Santa that sits on uh, Rudolph and he's putting a candy cane on the tree and then there's like snowflakes It's not supposed to be um, very big. So I think it you know, it finishes as like a, a small pillow or you could even put it in a small frame I'm using some of the called for and then two of the not called for I think So I did not have um, It called for classic color works red licorice and avocado and I did not have either one of those so I am using classic color works cherry cobbler and weeks dye works grasshopper and so the grasshopper is what I'm stitching the tree and then originally I had pulled this one which is just a limited edition gentle arts and I was going to do this as the tree but I figured if I did the tree, you wouldn't be able to see Rudolph very well. So I think I'm going to save this and put that particular green color down in the uh, poinsettias. So that's all the progress that I have. Um, you know, doing it in the morning, uh, I don't really get a whole lot of progress. It's sort of slow and steady wins the race. Uh, the rest of the colors are in DMC. And I think that I have all of those. Yes, I have all of those. And this is, this is them. I don't have, I could have, I should have grabbed like a floss ring, but I, I don't know what I was thinking about. I just kind of grabbed it right before I did my video. So it's not even ironed. And I meant to iron it so I could, you know, so it looks a little bit better. Um, I'm doing this on a piece of 36 count mocha that I had in my stash. And then once I'm done, I think I might spray it with the Primitive Gatherings Antiquing Spray. I think I just might spritz it a little bit to, you know, kind of make it look vintage-y. Uh, next up is Olga Stocking by Plum Street. So I am stitching this with Yvette. And we are working on our Olga's on Wednesday, except this past Wednesday, we did not work on them because she's trying to get, is it the pink house sampler? I think it's the Plum Street that has the big uh, pink house on it. She's trying to get that done before the end of the year. And I was trying to get Brian's stocking done. So we decided um, not to stitch on our Olga's this Wednesday, but I did stitch on it last Wednesday. So here is my progress. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count vintage pearl barley by the lakeside with all of the called for threads. And I love it, love it, love it. Uh, so I believe that when I pick it back up again, I will be working underneath the house and there's some acorns and there's a pumpkin and some leaves and then I start on Olga. And it could be, it looks like there might be one leaf at the top that I'm missing. 
So once I get back to that, I will hopefully get that top part completely finished and then begin working below the house. But I love it. We're only working on them on Wednesday. So I believe we've had eight Wednesdays maybe now. We started working on it the 28th of September. Eight or, well, I guess it would be eight because we didn't stitch on it this last. So it would have been nine if we would have stitched on it. So I have to check with her and see if we will be stitching it again this coming Wednesday or if we're just gonna postpone until after the new year, I'll have to find out. So it's a lot of fun to work on. I absolutely love it. I love the colors. Those are all of my colors. In fact, here they are right here. These are all of the colors and I absolutely love them. So much gorgeousness, so much. So it'll be exciting to have this one finished uh, for next year and, and hanging somewhere. I haven't quite figured out where I'm gonna hang it yet. Maybe maybe I'll just hang it with a quilt or something, but I, I love working on it. I am using one thread, so I'm stitching it one over two. Next up is, and I'm pretty sure it's Elizabeth Jane because it looks like Elizabeth, but it could just be Elizabeth Jane. I could be saying it wrong. I was looking at it the other day and I thought, is it Elizabeth or is it Elizabeth? I'm gonna call it Elizabeth Jane. Elizabeth Jane by Blackbird Designs. <laughs> so this one is block number 12 in the Anniversaries of the Heart series. And I was able to get block number 12 finished. So here is my progress. So I finished um, the block on, it was last week. Did I finish it on Friday? I either finished it Thursday or Friday of last week. Um, I stitched this one for my parents. Um, and I know that I mentioned this, um, my parents are divorced. So I wasn't sure, you know, what I should do. Um, but I finally decided that this is my history and my parents were married and they had three children and I figured they needed to be on a block together. So my maiden name is Leinbach. Uh, I put my dad's name up here, my mom's name down here. And then this is uh, my brother, Brad, my initial and my brother, Matthew up there. I absolutely love how this turned out. I am totally digging this red house and this, uh, the red is, uh, Cherry Cobbler by Classic Color Works. In fact, when Brenda um, announced, so when Brenda Gervais announced she was doing the, um, the stitch along, I had just finished this one and I ended up, some of the colors that are in this block ended up being in the, um, in the stitch along as well. So I, usually I have the, the threads to show and I don't usually take them apart until I've moved on to the next block. But in this case, I had taken them apart because they were needed for Mary and Minty. Um, but yeah, I'm just totally digging that house. I did change uh, a lot of the threads. I kept it true to the colors of, the, of it, which is what I've kind of tried to do in all of them. A few of them I have went ahead and just completely changed the color, but in a lot of them I've kept it pretty true to what, what the book, what the, um, the chart looks like. But when you go to pull, a lot of the times they are completely different. And the first thing that I found out, which I didn't know this, um, so the tree right here, you see the, um, the base of the tree, that's in dive and I mean, it's clearly brown. So I had pulled endive um, because I had used it in the previous block. And endive is, it's a color that I use quite a bit in everything that I'm stitching. And when I pulled it and I'm, you know, and I get to that, the, the base of the tree trunk and it's saying it's endive, I'm like, there's no way that this green trunk would be for this green tree. So I looked at it and it's brown and so when I, I don't know what I was doing. I was, I was somewhere and uh, somebody had done the anniversaries a couple of years ago and in their blog post, it had said that, you know, this chart had called for endive and that at one time endive had been brown. 
and now it is very much green. So I think I just used DMC. It might be like DMC, DMC 839 or 838 or one of those. The other change that I did was um, the tree is supposed to have a star and I took that out so that their wedding date would fit here. They were uh, married October 23rd, uh, 1976. And I was born in November of 1977. So they were only married a year and then they, they had a kid. <laughs> Um, so I eliminated that and I think I took out, I moved around some of the snowflakes to kind of help fill in areas. Um, in the border I took, I think the border only called for one or two greens and I ended up using uh, three or four just to kind of give it a little variegation because I did use DMC except for this, this ended up being a limited edition gentle arts and I, and I went ahead and I put it up here too. So this is my progress so far and I absolutely love it so much. I am excited to begin uh, the final block, which is the bonus block. And tomorrow I'm gonna go ahead and pull the colors for it. It'll either be today or tomorrow. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna I don't know that I'm going to have time today to pull the colors for it, so I'm thinking it might just be tomorrow, but I love it. I love it, love it, and I'm excited to begin the, the next part, the final part. I just, I am absolutely excited. I can't, I'm excited, but yet at the same time, I, I'm very emotionally invested in this piece because in stitching this in each block, you know, I had a relative I was gonna stitch it for, so I, I researched that relative and I got to spend a little bit of time. I learned some things um, that I wasn't expecting to learn. I found out some stuff that, you know, just by going into the family tree, I ended up debunking some stuff and I feel a little bit bad. Um, some of it I already, you know, when I, I knew what the family lore was, and then when I'm, I'm actually looking at the person and I'm looking at the date, I'm looking at where they lived, I'm realizing that there's just no way. <laughs> but I spent a lot of time with these relatives and I'm very, this piece means a lot to me. And so I, I'm gonna be happy to have it done and have it on my wall, but at the same time, I'm gonna be a little bit sad. <laughs> I'm very attached to it. <laughs> so. But I'm looking forward to it, um, to having it finished and having it on my wall. And uh, I can't wait. So this is what the bonus block looks like. And there is going to be one small change. Um, earlier in the summer, um, we lost our dog, Molly. And I just had started uh, this particular block when Molly passed away. And so this block ended up being for Molly. And I had a lot of people ask, you know, with Freddie joining our family, am I going to have him in a block or give him a block by himself? And there was no way um, to give him a block by himself because at that point I was almost all done. But I am going to put him in my anniversaries. So to give you one last look of what it looks like, um... I found, so the same place where I had purchased Molly's pattern, I found this pattern here. So this closely resembles Freddy. It's not his breed, but it looks, it looks a lot like him. Um, I'm gonna darken up his hair um, because his hair up on top is dark, his ears are dark, and then the rest of him is white except for a spot on his back. And so I'm going to stitch this one. I am going to, you know, change it. Just, um, I already kind of know the DMC that I'm gonna use. I think it's gonna be, um, I think it's 3021 and uh, 898, I think is the two DMCs. And then um, I'll have to find something that's a little bit lighter for his nose and then um, he'll be white. So keep in mind, um, so visualize Freddy one over one, and I think that I am going to put him right here. I think he will fit. So I think that's where he's gonna be. If, I don't think it's gonna, cause I'm not gonna really know until I'm, you know, stitching it, like 
I'm looking at the actual part. Um, the other place is to put him like right over here. So we'll see. So in order to meet my goal of having it done by December 31st, um, I will be working on it every single day starting tomorrow. I don't think I'm gonna have time to pull the colors tonight, but definitely tomorrow is when I will start it. That is the only thing that I'm going to be working on except for, uh, uh, is it Mary and Minty? Yes, in the mornings. So I'm just gonna have two things in my rotation um, because I'm not gonna, I'm not setting it. I might set it aside if, if Yvette wants to work on um, Olga stocking on Wednesday. But other than that, I'm gonna go pedal to the metal until I get that 12th block finished. So if I forgot to mention what I am stitching it on, uh, this is 35 count sand, and I am using a variety of all sorts of floss. Whatever I feel like fits the bill, that's what gets put in its place. And here it is, so hopefully the next time you see me, it will be done. Oh, I love it, I love it, love it, love it. I love when I take it off of the Q-snap, um, you know, when I'm, I'm uh, getting ready to film a video and I take it out of the Q-snap and I iron it and it's the first time I've seen it and it's just, oh, I love it, I love it. It's a lot of fun. So many of you guys are getting ready to start it as your new year, new starts, and I just love it. I hope that you will, you know, uh, keep me informed. I wanna watch your progress, so please let, you know, when you start it, let me know because I wanna be able to cheer you on because you guys have been cheering me on. I think it's so awesome that so many of you guys were inspired to start it. You've begun researching your family trees. I think that's just great. Okay, last but not least, this is Victorian Father Christmas, uh, Stony Creek Magazine, Summer 2015 edition. This is Brian Stocking. And I'm very excited to say it's done. So here it is. I finished this last night at 11 o'clock and I absolutely love how it turned out. He's still lobbying for me to frame it and not put it into the stocking, but I told him, no, it's going to be a stocking. <laughs> Once it's a stocking, he can do whatever he wants with it. So my plan this weekend is to quilt a piece of fabric for the backside and then watch a tutorial on how to turn this into a stocking. And I haven't quite decided. It does, um, so according to the pattern, you are supposed to put trim around it, but I don't know if I want to. I don't know, uh, because it looks like this was, so according to the picture, let me show it to you. There is trim all the way up here. And when I was looking in the directions, it doesn't talk anything about lining. It just has it where you take a piece of fabric, you put it, you know, right sides together, you um, sew around the stocking, and you leave a hole at the top for turning, turn it right side out, whip stitch it closed, and then add the, um, What's this stuff called? <laughs> I don't know. I lost it. Whatever this is, whatever this is called, you're supposed to add it. Um, so there's no directions on how to turn it into a stocking. So I went on to YouTube and I typed in Christmas ornament stocking tutorial. And there was one that popped up. I think it was Cindy's cross stitch. Um, I had sat down to watch it. And then that's when Brian called for me to go rescue him. So it's trim, it's trim. <laughs> so I have to decide if I wanna add trim. Uh, when I was looking at the kids' stockings, Ethan's does not have, um, his does not have trim, but Allison's does. So I haven't decided yet, but here's his. I'm hoping that Cindy's tutorial will help me understand how to turn this into a stocking. <sighs> Otherwise, um, Maybe he will get it framed with a hook for his other stocking to hang below it. So 
So here it is, and I it turned out so awesome. I absolutely love it. Love it. Love it, love it. So I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who cheered me on while I was working on his stocking. This, um, so this stocking has been in my rotation since Queen of Freedom was finished. So I finished her Memorial Day and I have been working on him ever since on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, however, in the last two weeks, I did change up my rotation. What I ended up doing was, um, I ended up working on his stocking all this week. So I worked on it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, just so I could get it done. Because at the rate that I was going, there was no way I was going to be able to finish. So I just decided I have to focus on the two that I need to get done by the end of the year and everything else can just wait. And once I did that, I felt much, much better. And so now it is done. And now my main, main focus, my absolute hardcore main focus is going to be my anniversaries of the heart. So, and you know what? I'm going to pause really quick and I'm going to go get their stocking so I can show you what they look like. Okie dokie. So before I show you Allison and Ethan's stocking, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a backstory. Um, my grandma, she made all of her grandkids and all of her great grandkids stockings. The only three kids who do not have the stockings that she made are myself and both of my brothers. We do not know what happened to them. Uh, there has been some speculation because it wasn't just our stockings that she made us. There was also ornaments that like my aunt had given us some of like the really old Disney ornaments and just a lot of stuff. And we don't have any of that. So, um, I, now that I have Brian's stockings done, I've been thinking more and more about maybe I should just go ahead and, and make a stocking for myself, but I don't know. I'm still holding out hope that my stocking's going to show up, but at this point, I highly doubt it. Anyway, so this was Allison's. So my grandma was still cross-stitching at this time, and this is the one that she made for Allison. So Allison and Ethan are the only two great grandkids who have the cross-stitch stockings. The other of um, the great grandkids, they have um, red work. So my grandma was still, she was still cross-stitching and she made this for Allison. And then when Ethan came along four and a half, five year, well, yeah, four and a half years later. And then um, she worked on his stocking until his first Christmas. This was Ethan's. So this was the very, very last cross stitch that she did. And she had already stopped because um, it was hard for her to uh, see the holes. My grandma stitched on Ada. And I think Allison's, it looks like hers might be 16 count. And Ethan's looks like that too. So by this time she had quit and she was just looking for something that was, was cute but simple because she was having trouble seeing the holes. So this is his. So when I thought about making a stocking for Brian and I had, you know, sort of promised it to him for the 20 plus years that we've been together and we've been married, um, originally he was going to get like a quilted stocking, but something was always kind of holding me back. I, I don't know what. And then as I started cross stitching, I thought, you know what, since both of the kids are cross stitch, I should cross stitch him one too. So that's the story of the stockings. <laughs> So my plan, of course, for the next two weeks is to get that fully finished in time for Christmas and then just continue to plug away on my anniversaries. And I really hope that when, I guess it would be in my update video on the 2nd of January, I hope that I will have that to show you and it will be completely finished and I will be ready to start my New Year news. So I ended up having to pause uh, a little bit longer than I intended to. I remember how I said today was just the weirdest, craziest day ever. Well, it got even weirder and crazier. Uh, so I'm back. It's like half hour since I paused my video. I grabbed Freddy. So here is Mr. Freddy. He's being a little ornery, huh? There's been a lot of excitement. Uh, so he's a little bit uh, frazzled. <laughs> Thank you, Freddy. <laughs> so here's Mr. Freddy. He, um, okay, 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 okay. <sighs> 
he, okay, so Freddy, on the 21st of December, he'll be seven months old. So he, uh, yeah, he's getting big. He goes to the groomers on Sunday, so I'm hoping that they, that he'll cooperate. And I've been trying to like, you know, uh, put my hands and stuff around his face and like, not like tug, not tug, not like yank on his fur, but you know, just kind of like get him used to having someone's hands playing with his fur. So I've been trying to do that. Um, but, <laughs> so we had a bit of excitement. Uh, I, if you remember, I told you I, I live on a, like a busy highway. So um, if you're familiar with the West Coast at all, um, I live on a, a stretch of highway that's called uh, 9090 Pacific Highway. Where I live, it's called Portland Road. It's a very busy, busy, busy highway. Today's Friday. Um, so about uh, three o'clock, it really gets busy. And just kind of as the hours tick by to rush hour, it's just nonstop cars. So I paused or I, I paused the video so I could, you know, kind of clean up and put uh, the kids' stockings and things away and get, and get the giveaway. And I think I'd even started talking about the giveaway and then I had to pause it. But the FedEx driver came and he parked in the, um, we have, there's two lanes and then in the middle there's a center lane, which is supposed to be like a, a turn lane for all of us that live down here because it seemed like every other day there was a fender bender. And so they, uh, when they redid the highway, they put in a center lane and the FedEx driver parked in the center lane to deliver a package and somebody slowed down to let him cross the street. And those, those people got rear ended and there was like traffic everywhere, cars everywhere, people everywhere all of a sudden. And so Freddie was going berserk anyway, but it's all fine now, but it's a crazy day. It's raining. So it's very slippery. And so I, I, my guess, it, it was a young guy. So my guess is he was probably on his, looking down at his phone instead of paying attention because, you know, he, he, to, he tried to avoid hitting the car and he like tapped the rear, the rear side bumper and he ended up almost plowing into the FedEx truck, which you should never pull your car into oncoming traffic when you're trying to avoid someone. Um, you should always pull towards the ditch, but anyway, so there was just a lot of people out here, a lot of horns, a lot of honking, a lot of everything. And Freddie was going crazy and he's a little wild now. And then, you know, all the things. So I'm back. Uh, I think it's after four o'clock now. <laughs> it is getting dark outside. Um, I do have, so in my last video, I had a giveaway. I was giving away these two kits. Uh, so these came in the kits that I got from the uh, Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. These are by um, a heartstring samplery and I I decided to give them away because I knew I was never gonna stitch them. I pulled a winner and the winner is Yolanda Stanfield. So Yolanda, congratulations. Um, she says for Christmas, she likes to make tamales. Um, so Yolanda, I'm coming to your house because I love tamales. Um, but congratulations. If you can get a hold of me via email, um, it is pumpkinhollowquilting at gmail.com. That would be fantastic. Um, I will also comment on your comment and thank you so much for playing. I had originally meant to have a giveaway in this video and I, uh, it didn't work out. So next time, <laughs> maybe at the end of the year, at the beginning, at the beginning of the new year, maybe I'll do a fun new giveaway because it'll be a new year. Um, it'll also be my flossiversary, my second flossiversary by then. Um, and so I'll just, uh, I'll save it and then we'll have a giveaway then. So as far as all of the cross stitching goes, that is the end. I do have some quilting that I want to talk about. So if you are not interested in that, um, this would be a great stopping off point. I will be back in two weeks um, and I will do my, um, where I show my whips and what's what I've been kidding up and talking about next year and all the plans and all the fun. Um, and I will see you then. But if you are interested in seeing the, what I have to show for quilts, stick around. Okay, let's talk about quilts. So first of all, before I forget, the quilt that is hanging here, um, the Christmas tree quilt, it is called Toll Christmas by Gina Martin. It's a free pattern. Um, I think you can find it in the Moda Bake Shop, but I will put a link directly to it uh, down below if you are interested. Let me show you something that I finished over uh, the past two weeks. 
and I know that I've shown this part of it uh, earlier in the spring and then I think I might have shown it one other time while I went ahead and I finished it. And that is this quilt here. So this one had started out being a table runner and it's made out of scrappy um, two and a half inch Civil War reproduction fabrics and then a solid fabric out of uh, one of Kim Deal's fabric lines. And I absolutely love it. So now instead of it being a table runner or a table topper, now it is the size of a throw. And so this one will be for me. Ahead and I finished that. Um, I think it only needed like two rows on the side and one on the bottom. And so I finished that one. I went ahead and I ordered some backing fabric. So this is fabric from the Hill, Hill Country Heritage by Paula Barnes. And I ordered this from Thousands of Bolts. And it came this last week. So I'm hoping that perhaps sometime um, this weekend maybe I can quilt it I hope and then I also have the quilt that Carol sent me um, that I would also like to get quilted so hopefully I'll have both of those to show you in my next update video but other than that I haven't really done much um, sewing for myself or quilting for myself I am done um, quilting for all of my clients and so now I have a couple of weeks of just you know, doing for myself. And it's, it's been really nice because usually I am like Christmas Eve, I'm still out there quilting for clients. Um, I ended up going to, um, let's see, on Black Friday, I went, there's a quilt shop that's about 15, 20 minutes from me. It's called the Speckled Hen and it's in Aurora, Oregon. And she has a beautiful selection of Civil War reproduction fabrics. I absolutely love going there. Um, she's very knowledgeable, she's very nice. And when I went there on Black Friday, I went for a specific reason only, but while I was there, um, I ended up picking up a couple of things. So the first thing that I picked up was this charm pack of Walnut Creek by Julie Hendrickson. Um, and I'm planning on um, making a, um, I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to make a half square triangle. I think it's going to be a table topper um, is what I am planning on doing. And hopefully, I think I'm going to have some downtime after Christmas and I'm planning on doing, I have some, a lot of projects that I have that, you know, I'm wanting to make for myself. And, and, um, and I think that once Christmas is over, usually that's when I, I start to make a lot of stuff for myself. And I think I just wanted to find like a charm pack where I can make like a really cute table topper. And so I think I'm going to make it out of this. It's just a half square triangle. So basically what I'll do is I'll draw a line on the back side of each fabric and I might pull some from my stash, um, some five and a half inch squares. Just It just kind of depends. And then um, I'll sandwich them together. So on each side, cut them apart, trim them, flip them, sew them together and just make myself a table topper. And then the other thing that I got, um, because I had some birthday money, I got this bundle of Fat Eights and I am planning on making and when I was looking at this, I was looking to see if there was a really good picture of it. But Temecula has been, um, she's been showing their past 12 days of Christmas patterns um, from years past. And there's been a couple in there, um, three so far that were past stitch alongs that they did during the month of December. And then other ones were um, patterns that she had released during like previous 12 days. So this one kind of gives you an idea. So I saw this quilt. Um, there's not like a full size picture of it, but I saw this particular quilt and I loved it. It's Christmas Civil War reproduction. Absolutely love it. And I had originally thought, you know, maybe I would go through and I would pull some from my stash because it doesn't really take a lot. I'm trying to see if there's a better picture of it, but I don't think that there is. I think there was just that little just that little snippet that I saw. Yeah, I don't think there's one. I'll put a link down below to their website um, because they've been doing that. Here's what the, um, what the quilt looks like when it's finished. 
anyway so originally I thought that might be kind of fun to do like a um, a Christmas quilt because a lot of my quilts are more like uh, and my decorations are more traditional Christmas whereas the rest of the year I like to kind of have all my prim stuff out and I've been sort of building on you know making and, and collecting more of like the prim style so I thought maybe this one might be kind of perfect. It's got blues and browns and creams and I might add stuff from my stash as well to make uh, one of those quilts because you're supposed to use like scrappy, you know, like the scrappy creams and low volume um, is what you're supposed to use. And then um, it's just three other colors. So I need stuff for like the rest of the year. And so I feel like this one would be perfect just to have for out for the rest of the year. And I love these colors. So those are kind of in my immediate plans. I've been, I have quite a few quilt projects next year and I'm really looking forward not only in my cross stitching, but also in my quilting. I have a lot of, a lot of projects that I'm very excited to start working on and I'm looking forward to it. But the real reason why I went on Black Friday to the Speckled Hen was because she had called me to tell me that the Jane Austen kit was in. And I couldn't take it home, um, but I could come and I could see if it was something that I wanted to purchase. Um, she couldn't release it to me because it was missing one of the fabrics, but she told me that I, you know, I could come and I could look and I could see. So we went and I fell in love with it. So, and, I, and I'm going to jiggle the camera because what I film on out here is a, a coffee table that lifts up. So it's not very, it's not the sturdiest, but here is the kit. So it, kind of, it looks like a book, a big, a big book. And I love it, oh my gosh. And I posted a picture of this on the day that I brought it home uh, because I went and I picked it up on Wednesday. Um, they had sent me a message on Facebook telling me that the fabric had come in and that I could pick it up. Um, because Well, and on Black Friday, the husband gave the okay for me to get it because he loved the fabrics too. He thought they were very pretty. So. Um, I went and I picked it up and it's absolutely gorgeous. I posted a picture of it on Instagram and Lisa of the Kindred Stitcher and Lori from Textilist, uh, Lori, or, uh, Lisa had sent me a message saying that they had saw this kit up in, uh, in Sisters. And then today they posted a picture, a selfie of them with their new kits. So it's so fun. There's so many people who, who picked up the kit. It's just, it's, it's gonna be such a fun. I am so excited. I have been waiting for this quilt to come out for over a year. So this is what the quilt looks like. Um, the kit comes with all of the fabric you need to make it. It comes with this cheater border right here. The original quilt, which they refer to as a coverlet because it does not have batting in it. Um, it was all hand pieced, but for the purpose of making the quilt, I mean, that would take forever to to cut out all of those tiny little um, diamonds. So they made some cheater fabric. Um, the kit comes with the ruler to cut out, to fussy cut all of the diamonds. And then trust me, if the lighting was a lot better, I would pull out all of the fabrics, but I know that time wise, um, I know this video might be kind of a long one. So let me find a picture of the quilt. This is what the quilt looks like. It's so fabulous. I love this. I am so excited. I've been, like I said, I've been waiting a year for this kit to come out. It's so fabulous. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Next year is gonna be so much fun. And then the husband told me to uh, pick up the um, backing fabric. So this fabric is all of her letters, all of Jane Austen's letters, as well as um, the music that she used to play. So he gave me the okay to, to get that too. And so that's what I got. So I have a lot of quilts that um, I have that I'm going to be making this next year. And I'm very excited. I've got a lot of great cross stitching. It's just, it's gonna be a fun year next year and I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, so if you've stuck with me for this long, thank you so much. I know that it's just, it's been the weirdest, the absolute weirdest day. It really, really has. So right now it is dark outside. Um, the window is open. So people driving by and are stopping and are turning are probably wondering what the heck I'm doing sitting here. My other brother has sent me like four messages in the last five minutes. So I probably better go find out what's up. 
Um, so I will be back uh, in two weeks. Uh, my next video will come out the day after Christmas and it will be um, where I show what has been in the, um, the mocking basket of whips, the heckling drawer of kits, my plans for next year, um, and my new year, new start, what it's gonna be. Um, and then one week after that, I'll be back with an update video. So since I will not see you between now and Christmas, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and you are looking forward to the holidays as much as I am. Um, thank you so much for stopping by today. I really do appreciate it so much. I hope you have a great two weeks and you get <clears throat> lots of stitching done. If you want to see what I'm up to between now and my next video, you can always follow me on Instagram. I am Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Or I do have a Facebook page, which is Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. I will put the links to both of those down below. and You can keep track of me and see what I'm up to and all the good things. So uh, until next time, have a great Merry Christmas and I will see you again soon. Bye guys. Thank you.